Okay, on my clock is 20 past 3, so let's start with exercise number 9. Today we talk about function approximators in prediction. So the goal is today to um, yeah, implement some different methods to approximate yeah, the um, yeah, model evaluation of these mountain, mountain car environment. And the reason for that is that we yeah, get a bit rid of the tabular methods because in yeah, actual real life problems, we have um, usually continuous state spaces so that we didn't need this um, discretization of the state space and can directly use these methods without any yeah, storage um, issues because the tabular gets too big to store it in a yeah, modern microcontroller. So, um, short to the environment, so we have here such a car which we try to accelerate on the top on the right hill to the flag, which is our goal. And to do that, it's a bit similar to the um, pendulum that we have to do some kind of swing up to get to the finish line. And um, yeah, the control of this plant will be part of the upcoming exercise next week. And Maybe um, one hint, if someone already saw the lecture before, we changed everything now to Torch and didn't use TensorFlow anymore. And yeah, with that, um, I will skip a bit this part in the top. It's just a small test. If uh, everything is installed correctly, then um, when you run this here, uh, if a window will open where you see something similar to the skiff in the top. And now we will start here with the linear function approximation. Uh, I guess my sound was shortly away, so I will start again. So what we do will here is that we have some kind of feature vector, which is based on the state vector weighted by some weights. And to calculate these weights, we will use here the semi-gradient TD0 prediction algorithm. I will show here the pseudocode in the slide. And um, yeah, the important part here is not to uh, describe or um, how the um, how the algorithm works. Uh, moreover, I will just um, yeah will go through these pseudo code and show the uh, equivalent lines here in the code of the solution, and then we will do some interpretation of the um, result we give here. Uh, we will get of these algorithm. Um, maybe here also is a hint given that we should. Um, yeah, look at the energy of the car and respect that in our feature vector. And here in the top is also important uh, to note that when we hit the finish line, so here when we go in the top here, this flag, this is the position 0 0.5, that we then um, yeah put our um, feature vector to 0 in general. So how does it look like? We have here now our feature vector. So the first part of this task, we will put in a one as static offset. That is the reason just um, that the algorithm have a position where he can fit yeah, some offsets um, if the error doesn't get to zero when he fits the rest of the features. Then we have the position and the velocity, the states of the um, the states of the environment, then we have the velocity squares which are somehow proportional to the kinetic energy. Then here in the bottom 
that is maybe an important part where this, uh, this comes from. When you go into the source code of the environment, you will find a high function which calculates the height based on these um, sine function. So this is somehow then proportional to the potential energy. And then we have based on the cosine, the uh, acceleration based on the gravity. So that is the first part. Um, important is here to mention that we want to set this feature also to zero when we are at the position 0 0.5. That is here performed by this win variable where we set the integer to one if the position is greater than 0 0.5 and then um, we this feature vector gets based on the subtraction in the a difference in the end to um, zero. So that is the feature vector and then we will continue with the interaction or maybe we will have a look shortly here on the um, pseudo code. So it starts here in the top that we have some kind of policy which we wanted to ev evaluate. So this is here in the top. The policy part, it's already given, which we want to evaluate. Then we want to have a differential function, uh, V, which is somehow on our feature vector, which um, gets zero if it terminates, that I already described here with the, here in the feature function. And I already said how it works. Then, we want to have some kind of step size alpha. This is already given here in the bottom cell of 0 0.1. And um, then we have here the initialization of the weights. And what we do here is just that we uh, use here the weights and initialize them to 0 which is in this case fine, but for example, for neural networks, this is maybe not the best way to initialize them. Okay, then we wanna go in a for loop over the episodes. The number of episodes is already given. Then we have here the for loop in line 13, and then we get the initial state x0 by the reset of the environment that should be already known from the former exercises. Then the next for loop is here shown um, for a number of steps which we interact with the environment, but um, we are not now, uh, for us it's not known how long an, an, yeah, an episode will take, how long we will need to terminate at the finish line. So this is shown here now with an while loop and we wait and we interact then so long with the environment until we reach the finish finish line and then the stun flag is set to one and with these set to one we will end the while loop so that we always interact as long as we reach the finish line. So then we have here some interaction and some learning function. And we have, uh, and for that, we will uh, go to the top. So we have here the interaction function. So we have go with the state into our policy, receive some action. With the action, we go onto the environment and the environment will give us the next state, some reward, and also the information if the um, if we reach the finish line or not. Then we have the forward part, which is inside of the learning part. So what we do here is to make the yeah, multiplication of the weights and the feature state, it's already shown in the um, description of the task in the top. 
And with that, we get all the features for our current state, the features for our next states based on, based on this feature um, function. And then we use the feature function to get the values for the update, which is shown here in the line of the pseudocode, where we first calculate the error. So this is the part with the reward and here the gamma and so on. And then based on that, we can calculate here then the step size, the, the gradient to update the weights of our weighting factor. So when we execute this full thing, then we received somehow a color map, an evaluation which value has each part and something is really important here. So darker um, parts are less valuable than lighter parts. So the best thing is to reach the finish line because here we um, get no negative reward. Yeah, maybe I forgot that at the beginning that we have a short look again now for this evaluation about the policy. So <clears throat> or not about the policy, more about the reward. And the reward is that we uh, get minus one for each time that we need to interact with the environment. So the reward will be worse uh, how longer it takes to reach the finish line. So that means that the positions near the finish line should be really good, but what is really important here, when we look here on the velocity and we have negative velocity, we usually go into negative direction. So we will uh, have in the next step further distance to the goal line. So at least here in the bottom right part of the plane, we should have um, yeah, somehow worse evaluation then for the top part and that is not given at the moment with these uh, linear function approximator and also we have here somehow a bit better evaluation when we are very far but at least we have here some better kinetic energy so that we can hopefully get higher speeds to um, hit then the finish line okay Let's look again from instead of the t, uh, 2D plot here on the 3D plot. So here we already see a bit that we get worse for these negative speeds, a bit better. But um, what is a bit um, yeah, questionable is that we have here somehow a step between the um, yeah, information shortly before the finish line directly to the finish line. Here we would expect that we get somehow a more smooth transition between these interaction. So maybe that's the information for the first part. I will shortly look onto my notes if I have forgot something. No, I guess I have everything. Have someone of you open questions? If that's not the case, I will continue with the second part. So now, ah, I forgot something here. Okay, so here we are going back to the um, yeah, 2D plot. And here in red, we will see the trajectories of different execution of the environment. So here, this red line is always the start line where the um, cart pole, uh, the mountain car starts. And then you see it accelerates into the yeah, negative position and then it goes into the goal line, into direction goal line, uh, uh, finish line. And then, yeah, part of the cars can directly hit in the first try the um, finish line, but some of the um, cars are not able to directly hit the finish line and go back to the opposite side 
And what happens here is the car hits the wall, so the velocity of the car gets directly to zero. That is the reason why we have here somehow a jump to this um, upper part. And then we accelerate again to get to the finish line. So some of the cars needs here a second swing in the between the mountains to get to the finish line. So that is um, everything for the first part. I hopefully have everything. I will shortly look into the task description. So we talked about the feature vector, um, set the feature vector to zero if we have the finish line. We talked about the hint here. I guess then we have completed that. And we can continue with the second part. So what we do now here is that we use instead of the um, linear estimator, the recursively squares estimation. So I will go on here also with the pseudocode. And um, yeah, instead of the yeah, step size, or uh, we have now here some kind of forgetting factor, which is between zero and one to, um, yeah, to teach uh, our function approximator. And what is maybe here really important to mention is that if this forgetting factor is set to one, then we will forget nothing and um, consider all experience we collect during the training. But uh, I mean, in this case, it is possible. But when we look onto dynamical systems or continuous operation where the system can change a bit, then it's yeah more applicable or used more. It is uh, more used that we use something here between 0 0.9 or 0 0.99 or something close to one. That is all was also mentioned in the lecture. I um, saw it on the slide when I prepared these tasks. And um, yeah, what we should do now is that we look a bit here for the different um, forgetting factors, what will be happened. And um, yeah, then we use the feature definition from task number one. Um, Yeah, then let me check. Did we forgot something? No. Okay. So we start again here with the feature function. We have the same features as before. I guess what is really important here is maybe the again the one in the top as an yeah, compensator for some offsets if the um, yeah, approximator is not really able during the optimization to fit all the other parameters. He has some kind of feature where he can fit the offset into. And um, what is here a bit different to the other one that we have some kind of normalization which we can apply but for the moment, I will turn that off so that we can have later a look what will change in that part. Um, yeah, so then I will quickly execute that once and then we will have a look again on the pseudocode. So we have again the policy pi to be ev evaluated. Yeah, that's already given from us before you start with the um, exercise. Then we need a feature representation which terminates also at zero that um, was already designed in the first task and we will just reuse it here. Then we need some initialization of the weights and also of the covariance matrix P. This is performed, where is it? Here, so we have um, the P 
matrix, which is an yeah, identity matrix. And then we have um, here again with zero initialize the weighting vector. And then we can go on. We have again a number of episodes given. We have here our for loop, which interacts with uh, the system, uh, the environment. We get here with a reset our initial state. And we have the same behavior like before that we didn't have a defined step number per episode. We just run the while loop until we reach the finish line. And um, the interaction is like in the task before. And we have now a new learning function. So what happens here is that we get yeah, the feature state, the next feature state, and then we um, follow just the algorithm for the recursive least squares that we yeah, update the covariance matrix, the weights, the residuals, and so on to get the information for the covariance matrix and the weights and then can make our prediction. So I already restarted the training of that. So maybe it's already important to yeah, keep a bit in mind how long this takes. It's, it's only 27 seconds for the last task. Then let's have a look again on the 2D plane. On the first, we uh, on the first few, we didn't see too much changes into it. It looks pretty much the same like in the first task. Also, when we have a look here onto the um, yeah, 3D plot, we see maybe that the step here in the end to the finish line gets a bit smaller, but not significant significantly. And um, yeah, what we now can do is that we um, look onto the different things we can yeah, change here. For example, um, we change now our update or our forgetting factor a bit for 0 0.9 in this case, so the bit smaller one. Then we have shortly to wait that the recursive least squares learn the new weighting vector. And then we can have another view on the 2D plot and the 3D plot. So first thing which we should spend a bit attention to is here now this new weight vector where we see that some of the weights get really big. So that is always a hint that maybe the prediction gets unstable. And I will show shortly one part how you can handle that to get a bit yeah, smoother um, weighting factor to prevent that it gets unstable. When we look here now, on the 2D plane, we see maybe that it's get here for higher velocities a bit better so that we have here a smoother um, part getting from the uh, getting to the finish line. It should be also better visible here now into the 2D plot that we have here really uh, yeah, a better transition that we have for higher speeds that it is better to get to the finish line to terminate the environment. And we see also that we yeah, tend some, that um, here the area which I mentioned already in the first task for the negative speed where we yeah, higher the distance to the finish line gets now a worse interpretation than before. So let's have another look how we can prevent these um, yeah, somehow overfitting of the weights that they didn't get too big. So 
this I already mentioned before that here is some kind of normalization of these states. So if I set that back to true and execute everything again, then we will see hopefully that the um, weighting, the new weight factor is then a bit better. And um, maybe another important point, which I can tell during the waiting time, I will not show it today, but um, when you have a short look onto this specific task of the exercise series uh, 2022, the video, there uh, Max will show that when you yeah, over specify your features, for example, you add here five further features or something like that, then this method can get unstable and you receive in the weight vector only nuns. And yeah, you should keep that somehow to the information you need, but not over specify it with too much more information, which is yeah not necessary for the moment. So while I talked about the um, yeah, over dimensioning of the feature vector, the training is now finished. And what we see here is now that the weights due to the normalization gets much smaller. And yeah, this is uh, prevents then the overfitting of some of the weights and the um, yeah function approximator should work better or uh, didn't get unstable then. We can have another look onto the plot, how it looks like with the normalization. And we see we get here somehow a better transition, but we see also that, yeah, the function approximator, at least here for the part with the higher speeds, works not as good as before. But we can also go, but what is really good here is that, for example, when we go on to further distance here, the um, yeah, value gets worse because yeah, somehow we need to get here to have enough acceleration to reach the finish line, but um, yeah, to go further into the negative positions onto the left side of the environment is not necessary to reach the goal line. So maybe we can repeat that shortly for um, lambda equal to one. So it, this is now somehow the first experiment just with the normalization, which we looked at. And what we should see now is, when I rem remember correctly, it's pretty the same, like the um, result of zero point, uh, the forgetting factor 0 0.9 without the um, normalization. So we see again, we have yeah, relatively small values for the weighting factors. The 2D plot is yeah, more like the plot we saw already for the forgetting factor of 0 0.9 without normalization. Yeah, that is somehow the things I want to show to this task. We talked a bit about the different forgetting factors. We looked a bit about the different solutions. Um, important um, is that when your weightings factors get so big here that you introduce some kind of normalization to stable the algorithm and keep also the features to a minimum that your um, algorithm get not, uh, get not unstable. I will now not take the time to look at the 0 0.99. Um, I mean, you can execute the code by yourself and have a look again on that. I guess we spent already some time on this task. Do you have some open questions? Otherwise, I will continue with the next task.
If there are no further questions, we will continue now with the nonlinear function approximation with artificial neural networks. For this, we will use the uh, PyTorch package to configure the network. Maybe at this point, I'm in my daily work, I usually use more Keras and um, TensorFlow, I hopefully say everything correctly. And um, yeah, if there are some further question to the PyTorch um, syntax, I hopefully can answer that. But um, if not, I will yeah give an answer then in the next exercise about it. So what we have to do here is now that we um, yeah do the same task like before. But we changed now our approximation that we not get the has as an input the feature vector. Instead, we just use the state space or the states of the environment and normalize them. So something which we already did in the task before. It is shown here that we yeah, use some kind of min-max normalization. Yeah, you can. Uh, have a look here on it. And um, what is really important or uh, interesting to know, um, it is easier to yeah, um, train a neural network when you somehow only use normalized information, input information between minus one and one, because it yeah, just fits a bit better. The weights didn't have to make too uh, much, uh, too great jumps between the different gradient updates or weight updates. So yeah, in general, you save a lot of training time when you normalize your states before you start the training. OK, so we will have again some kind of forward path and backward path. It should be already known from lecture number eight I have here. Um, the pseudo code of the training of a neural network. So we are, what we will do here is now some function approximation with the feed forward network. So we have here some in a initialization of the network. We will use three layers. If each layer has 16 neurons. We have here then the input dimension, which is um, similar to the shape of the environment. So in this case, two, and then we will give back a number uh, only one value, which is the um, yeah the uh, the value of the current state of the model or of the evalu evaluation evaluate. Oh God. Okay. Then we have here the forward path where we connect these three layers of the init function. And what we do here is that the hidden layers, so layer one and two, have the ReLU function instead of the linear function. I will show it shortly here. So it's a non-linear function. As long as the input is negative, the output is zero. And when the input gets positive, it's equal to the um, input. Okay, that's to this case. Then we have here some kind of learning function. So we have the current state, the next state, which is normalized by our normalizer on the top. Then we have our um, model here and um, yeah, when I go back, then we will see a bit may, maybe a bit better. So we calculate based on the model the next value if you have if we started it. Otherwise, um, <coughs> Otherwise, we calculate uh, recursively our target here. Um, yeah, 
So we make the prediction based on the model, calculate our loss based on the target and the prediction. And then we yeah, make afterwards, when we finish the forward path, the um, backward uh, back propagation. So we set firstly the gradients to zero, calculate the losses, so the gradients in the backward path, and then we use here the step function of the optimizer to update the weights. So when we look here into this pseudocode, um, these three parts are equal here to the back propagation and yeah the forward propagation is then here in the top okay then let's have short a look here in the bottom so we have here already uh, we have here the learning rate, the forgetting factor, the number of episodes, the input dimension, uh, which is equal to the observation space, which I mentioned before as um, zero. Then we uh, make here the feed forward network as a model, define our optimizer, define our loss function, with, which is the mean squared error. And then we have, like in the tasks before, the for loop for the number of episodes. And then we have here the while loop um, until we reach the finish line. As I said before, we should keep in mind a bit the execution time of the um, recursively squares or the linear um, estimator. And we see the neural network takes, yeah, a lot more time than the other two methods to train. I mean, it's not too much more, but uh, it is a significant difference. And what we can see here now is that um, here in the 2D plot is that we have really a nice evaluation of the value near the finish line and see directly that when we go to the negative speed, near the finish line that the evaluation gets worse and also um, in general here the area looks quite smooth um, towards the um, states into the state space which are better to reach the finish line. So we see the same behavior of the mountain car uh, so it's also the, uh, the exact same policy so uh, it's um, yeah we could imagine that that it, it doesn't change that much so we have the cars which reach directly for the finish line and some of the cars yeah hit into the wall and need some extra turn to get there let's have a look at the plane here we see also the evaluation slightly under the plane how the cars or the trajectories of the cars how they run through the curse through the um yeah, environment and what we see here is really a nice smooth plane uh, of the function of the state evaluation that the uh, approximation here with the neural network is really good in comparison to the linear function approximation maybe as a last short note so when we look here into the connection of the different layers, when we just look here at the output layer itself, if we connect that to the input directly, we have, have exactly the same like the linear function approx uh, approximator. And just because of these yeah, ReLU hidden layer or activation function, we can really nicely approximate this nonlinear behavior. Um, when I look now onto my notes, I have maybe two, uh, one extra note. Usually we as engineers would give always here some um, 
physical units also to these states and so on. But um, yeah, it's a bit hard to say which units here are used. So this is a more like an exception that we don't mention the unit of the state space here, but usually we should um, yeah, spend attention there uh, that we always use SI units to define our action space. Okay, I guess based on my notes, I have said everything. Do you have any further questions to this exercise? If that's not the case, I will end the session for today. And thanks for attending. And we will see next week then with the uh, again with the mountain car environment for the then for the control part, so that we make not only the function approximation, uh, we also have a look then how to choose the action in a better way to get as quickly as possible to the goal line. And with that, I wish all of you a nice day and see you next week.